Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to be looking at pre-charge resistors. Uh, we're going to look at what they are, how they work, why they should be used, and how to install one into your Suron. So to begin with, a pre-charge resistor is simply a resistor meant to slow the flow of energy between two systems at different voltages. So as you can see in our crudely drawn example here, uh, we have the controller with capacitors which store energy and a battery that stores energy. And generally if the controller hasn't been used recently, the capacitors will be depleted and would read zero volts across the positive and negative terminals. The battery, however, will be reading much higher than zero volts. Uh, a fully depleted 60 volt may be around 48 volts, whereas a fully charged 72 volt will be around 84 volts, so much higher in any case than depleted capacitors. Simple physics shows that energy is always trying to flow from a high state, aka the battery, to a low state. And when we allow that to happen with little resistance, it can cause damage to the controller due to the rapid inrush of current, sometimes at a thousand plus amps. Now most controllers on the market are not rated to handle a thousand amps of inrush current, especially over years of use, which is why it is important to make sure that you are properly protecting your controller regardless of what brand it is. This here is a pre-charge resistor. It is 250 ohms and rated for 30 watts of power transmission. This slows down the flow of energy considerably, allowing you to safely bring your capacitors in the controller to voltage equivalency with your battery without the risk of blowing them up. Oftentimes people will confuse this with the resistor that is in an anti-spark connector. These are not the same thing, and even if you have an anti-spark resistor that claims that it has pre-charge capability, a pre-charge resistor should be used as well. The only scenario in which a pre-charge resistor doesn't need to be used is if the BMS in your battery has a soft start function built in, and something like the stock battery with the BMS in place does have that, and there are of course some aftermarket batteries that have that, though many do not. So, generally speaking, it's the job of the upstream system to protect the downstream system. Uh, that is industry standard. And that's why in an electric vehicle, you would have a large pre-charge system generally inside of your battery, but between your battery uh, cells and the controller. The e-bike industry with its limited amount of regulations and high number of aftermarket parts makers, there isn't really a standard for this. Thus, many batteries are sold without a proper BMS that has this function, or many are sold with no BMS at all. In any case, where the aforementioned is true, the pre-charge resistor here should be installed. Now, this is something that we sell along with other vendors online. This is the specification for an ASI controller, though generally speaking, this will work fine for most all controllers. Before we go over and install it in the bike, let's look at how it works in your Suron system. Here we have our battery that again can flow over a thousand amps to fully depleted capacitors within the controller. We have our breaker, which is more like a switch and should always be kept in place. And uh, that is only on the positive side. We then have our controller and of course our ground coming back to the battery to complete the circuit. With no resistor, flipping this breaker on will allow all the stored energy in this battery to immediately rush into the controller with no resistance, potentially damaging the capacitor. Here is where our pre-charge resistor comes in. It will go right like this around the breaker. Technically speaking, it would go into one side of the breaker here and out into the other side like that. So what that'll do is when your breaker is in the off position, once you plug your battery in, energy will slowly flow through the resistor. And I say slowly, it's still fairly quick, but it'll slowly flow through the resistor and charge your capacitors at the appropriate rate. So whenever you connect your battery, the breaker of course needs to be in the off position. If it were on, it would just bypass this resistor flowing straight in and again, possibly damaging the capacitors. After a short amount of time of allowing the uh, capacitors to be charged, just a couple of seconds, we can flip the breaker on and energy will flow as normal. Another basic law is that energy is always going to take the path of least resistance. 
So while a small amount will flow through this resistor here, which you can use law of parallel resistors to determine the amount of flow through this one, it will be a very, very small amount. So your parasitic draw should be very small. Now let's go look at how to install this on the bike. Installing the resistor is quite simple and is best to just be done during the installation of your controller kit. There are two bolts on either side of the frame that we're going to take out and that will allow us to bring this whole plate back, exposing this face of the breaker. If you bought your resistor from us, it will come with a little bit of a 3M adhesive on the back here. And then it will come with wires that are pretty long and you'll likely need to trim them, though they're left that long, so that you have the option of where you want to put this. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm going to grab a little bit of just isopropyl alcohol. Before you adhesive anything, it's best to wipe it down with this. So we're gonna get a little bit onto a paper towel here. I'm just gonna wipe down the back of this breaker. We don't want the adhesive coming undone on this. So it's best to just have it fully cleaned. All right, now that that's clean, I'm going to take and peel the 3M adhesive coverage off here. If you don't know, resistors uh, are bi-directional. I am going to install it so that the resistance letters, or the uh, specifications for the resistor are facing upward. So after I've peeled this off, Another step to make this stick just a little better is to put some heat to the back of this. So I'm going to do that and then we're going to stick it right on the back of the resistor there. Just going to heat this up a little bit. Not a lot. And then take, move the wires out of the way if you have to, and stick it right in the middle of there. We're going to want to keep some pressure on there for about 30 seconds or so and I'll be back with you when that's done. All right, so the resistor has been fully adhered to the back of the breaker here. And you're going to want a pair of wire strippers. And I already pre-cut these wires down to size, but they still do need to be stripped. So we're gonna strip roughly half an inch uh, of the shielding off so that there is raw wire exposed. We'll do that on both sides. It's wires around 18 gauge, if you're curious. So we'll twist the ends so they're not super frayed. And then on top of your resistor here, zoom in, there are uh, a couple of Phillips head screws. One of them is here, and then there's one on the other side. When I unscrew that, the positive wire here uh, down at the bottom, which is a bit hard to see, but it's right down there and that can easily slip out. Um, so make sure that that stays in, but it is necessary for installation to loosen this. So we're going to do that. We'll just do one side at a time here. You'll take and curl the wire of the pre-charge resistor around and there's two little plates inside of your resistor that this wire should be in. And you're going to want to put the pre-charge resistor wire in with the other main one. And it can help to just fully pull out this wire here. And so you can see all the strands right there that have been soldered together, it looks like. But we can just take, run those two together back in to the breaker and then tighten it down. And of course, we're gonna do a little pull test on that after it's done to make sure that both wires have been resecured properly. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. All right, we've now got the wire from our resistor ran in with the positive battery cable. We gave a tug on both those and they are fully secured. And of course you wanna make sure you push both wires in far enough to where you cannot see any of the wiring exposed outside of the breaker. It's also important that you run this wire here below this clip. If you run it above, the clip can rub on it. And then of course, this is a live wire with full battery voltage running through it. And that can cause a short against the metal frame, AKA your ground, which can lead to issues. 
So we're gonna do the same with the wire on the other side and then we can button this back up. All right, as you can see, we now have the battery plate pushed all the way back forward. The bolts on either side are back in. And you can tell this is, of course, a very non-intrusive uh, part to install. You can't even tell it's there once this is pushed all the way back forward. It should be part of your uh, just general electrical safety inspection to check those wires. Uh, every so often, of course, make sure your breaker um, bolts here are tight so that those cannot come loose or um, that the wires are not fraying from rubbing, uh, again, which can lead to a short. So now we're going to plug a battery into this and we can show you that even with the breaker off, power will of course be flowing and you can turn the controller on. All right, we now have everything fully reinstalled. The breaker is in the off position and if this is installed right, when I turn this key it should have power. Note that you really don't want to turn this on to test this because you're going to be running all of this power through a resistor to power your entire bike. Obviously, that's not a good idea. The resistor is probably going to get pretty hot. Even your headlight alone, I believe, is probably above the power rating of the resistor. So I'm just going to turn it on and off very quickly just to show you that the headlight turns on. So you can see I have power there. You should never turn your key on without the breaker being on. All your power you want flowing through the breaker, not the resistor. The resistor is simply there just to power your capacitors on first connection, and that is it. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot us an email. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. That is all for today's video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.